Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionalis, continuing our rheumatology playlist of videos. In the previous video, we have talked about the extra articular manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis, and I've promised to make a whole video about anemia and rheumatoid arthritis. This is gonna be super cool. Here is my imaginary friend Rose, she has rheumatoid. See, the typical age of presentation is 40 to 60 years, so her hair is kind of gray-ish, starting to become gray. She has the articular manifestations of rheumatoid and the extra articular manifestations such as the rheumatoid nodules, the anemia of chronic disease, the interstitial lung disease with pleural effusion, the pericarditis with pleural effusion, the episcleritis, etc., and the Baker's cyst. And she has the atlantoaxial subluxation. This is an articular manifestation. With that being said, now let's get started. Clinically, a rheumatoid has symptoms, complications, and associations. Symptoms are articular and extra-articular. Articular are upper, lower, and atlantoaxial. The extra-articular are general and organ-specific. Anemia is here. So anemia is an extra-articular manifestation of rheumatoid, which kind of makes sense because anemia is a problem in the blood, not in the joint. Get your head out of your sphincter. This deal is gonna be over very soon. Perfectionalist Ultimate Notebook plus 20 lymphoma cases plus 25 bleeding cases for less than five buck. Available on patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Blood and lymphatic disorders in rheumatoid arthritis. First, let's do the lymphatic because they are easy. We have neutropenia such as Felty syndrome and TLGL. We'll talk about Felty in a later video. TLGL is T cell large granular lymphocytic syndrome. If you want to know a comparison between Felty and TLGL, go to Patreon. What else? Rheumatoid arthritis can raise your risk of lymphoma. Be specific. Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's? Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Please be more specific. Diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. And I've made a video about all of these before. What else? Thrombocytosis. Why? Because rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic inflammation. Don't believe me? Watch my video on thrombocytosis. It's on in my bleeding and coagulation disorders playlist. Now let's talk about anemia. If you have been a previous subscriber and you have watched my playlist called Hematology, this video is going to make so much sense to you. We're going to review almost half of hematology in five minutes. It's going to be awesome let's start anemia anemia of chronic disease why because rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic disease that's why anemia of chronic disease is also known as anemia of inflammation and as you know rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic inflammatory arthritis starts as normocytic and becomes microcytic and we have talked about this for a long time in my hematology playlist what other kinds of anemia IDA Iron deficiency anemia. Why? Because rheumatoid arthritis patients have pain. When they have pain, they take pain medicine, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs, which cause gastritis, peptic ulcer disease, and GI bleed. When you bleed, you lose blood. When you lose blood, you lose hemoglobin. When you lose hemoglobin, you lose heme and globin. And heme has iron and protoporphyrin. So you're losing iron, hashtag iron deficiency anemia which starts as normocytic and then becomes microcytic because Rome was not built in one day. To understand this analogy, which watch my videos in hematology playlist. What else? Autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Why? Because rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease. And as you know, autoimmune hemolytic anemia is normocytic. Now let me ask you a tough question. Is it the warm subtype or is it the cold subtype? Please let me know the answer in the comment section. Next, we have megaloblastic anemia. Why? Because rheumatoid arthritis patients have rheumatoid arthritis. They need DMARDs, disease-modifying anti-rheumatoid drugs. Such, and they have synthetic and biologic. Synthetic such as what? Methotrexate. Methotrexate will inhibit the dihydrofolate reductase or DHFR. When it inhibits the DHFR, so dihydrofolate is not gonna be able to be converted into tetrahydrofolate. Tetrahydrofolate is now history. This is called folate deficiency. This will lead to megaloblastic anemia, which is a macrocytic anemia. 
Okay, now this lecture is boring, so I'm gonna yell at you because I love you, okay? And want you to be the best, so please forgive me. There are two types of macrocytic anemia, guys. We have the megaloblastic and the non-megaloblastic. Megaloblastic is called megaloblastic. Why? Because it, it's called blast. And blasts are big. Sites are small. Okay, we get it. Non-megaloblastic anemia has small cells called site. That's why we call them non-megaloblastic because they don't have the blast, they have the site. How to differentiate between megaloblastic and non-megaloblastic anemia in one word? The answer is hypersegmented neutrophil. Okay, this is those are two words. Sorry, I take it back. So first, let's start with the non-megaloblastic. Okay, what causes non-megaloblastic anemia? Your liver is stupid, affecting your red blood cell, making them large, looking like a freaking target called target cell or codocytes, which are big inside, inside that's why it's a macrocytic anemia. After all, target is a huge superstore, wink wink. We're done with the non-megaloblastic, let's talk about the megaloblastic. What causes the megaloblastic anemia? defect in DNA synthesis. Why? Because one of the raw materials to build DNA is folate. We have folate and B12. Both of them are needed to make DNA. So megaloblastic anemia is caused by a deficiency of vitamin B12 or folate or both. So what? So what? DNA synthesis cannot occur. Cell division cannot occur and hematopoiesis depends on cell division because the stem cells and the blast start up large, immature and stupid from them to become, for them to become small, mature sites like this, they need to divide, they need replication, but the B12 or folate is missing, if they're missing, so they will remain large, immature and stupid. They wanna mature. But if B12 or folate are missing, they will remain large, immature, and stupid. And even if some of them succeeded in dividing because they managed to clench some B12 or folate, their children are gonna be large, immature, and stupid. Which cell lines are affected? Red blood cells, white blood cells, or platelets? All of them, baby. Don't you understand that all of the cell lines require cell division? They require DNA replication? So you have big blast, that's why we call it megaloblastic anemia, such as giant erythroblast, giant myeloblasts, giant megakaryocytes, and since actions have consequences, they will give birth to large red blood cells called macrovalocytes, big fat buffaloes, giant metamyelocytes, including large hypersegmented neutrophils. How about eosinophils and basophils? Same thing, these are granulocytes too, but basophils and eosinophils are not numerous, so who cares? Neutrophils, on the other hand, constitute about two-thirds of your white blood cell count, so it's very easy to find them under an old microscope with one eyepiece. No, no enough funding. Last, we have giant platelets. Why aren't they giant hypersegmented platelets? Stupid! A platelet doesn't have a nucleus. It's not even a cell. It's just a piece of the megakaryocyte. Okay, back to our story of methotrexate inhibiting dihydrofolate reductase. When you have inhibited the dihydrofolate reductase, you have less tetrahydrofolate. Less tetrahydrofolate, less DNA synthesis. Less DNA synthesis, megaloblastic anemia. Question number one, do you expect hypersegmented neutrophils? Yes, because it's a megaloblastic anemia. Question number two, do you expect neurological manifestations? No, because this is a folate deficiency, not a B12 deficiency. Question number three, do you expect the homocysteine level to be normal? No, it's gonna be high, called homocysteinemia and will appear in the urine, homocystinuria. Question number four. Do you expect methylmalonic acid level to be normal? Yes, because it's a folate deficiency, not a B12 deficiency. Remember, B12 deficiency has both, both 
homocysteine high and methylmalonic acid high. But folate deficiency, only the homocysteine level is high while the methylmalonic acid is normal. So if you are just getting started in medicine and I'm your professor and I've asked you what kind of anemia do you see in rheumatoid and you've answered anemia of chronic disease, I'll be so happy and dancing in the street. But if you are a fourth year medical student or God forbid a resident and I asked you and you just told me about the anemia of chronic disease, I'll kick you in the butt, metaphorically speaking. Because yes, anemia of chronic disease is the most common one, but we also have iron deficiency anemia, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, and megaloblastic anemia. Let's review the extraarticular manifestations of rheumatoid in one minute. Okay, we have pericarditis, CHF, coronary artery disease, we have aortitis and levito reticularis, hashtag serositis. How about the lungs? You have serositis or pleurisy, and you have pleural effusion, and you can have nodules and interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, which is basal in case of rheumatoid. Affects the salivary gland, chronic cell at nights of the major salivary glands. You have dry eyes, episcleritis, and scleritis. Nerve problems, including carpal tunnel syndrome, which affects the median nerve under the flexor retinaculum, and mononeuritis multiplexed into foot drop, wrist drop. You have subcutaneous nodules on the extensor surface. You can also have nodules on the valve and in the lung. Blood and lymph, you have anemia. If the question asks you what's the most common morphology seen in rheumatoid, answer normocytic normochromic. If you want to be more sophisticated, we have anemia of chronic disease, iron deficiency anemia, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, and megaloblastic anemia, which is macrocytic. Then we have neutropenia lymphoma, especially non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, especially diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, and thrombocytos because rheumatoid is a chronic disease. If you love medical mnemonics, try Picmonic. They are awesome. The link is in the description below. They are not a sponsor of this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. Get all of my cases and all of my PDF notes that you can download at patreon.com forward slash medicals. For you to understand my videos properly, you should read my notes first. Then watch the video. Then read the notes again for maximum memory retention. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Until next time, please be safe, stay happy, and study hard.